What is up, guys? My name is Elliot Waite, and today we are going to be balancing a pull on a cart. We'll be using OpenAI's cart pull environment. At each time step, we're given four values. We're given the cart position, we're given the cart velocity, the angle of the pull, and the pull's velocity at the tip. So that will be its angular velocity relative to its base. And we're gonna try to decide if we want to choose the action zero to push the cart to the left or action one to push the cart to the right. So to start, we'll just always choose push the cart to the left and let's just see what that looks like. So as you can see, we pushed the cart to the left and eventually the pull angle got too tilted and it caused the episode to end and we only got a total reward of nine. So we get a reward of one at each time step and our goal is to get 200 rewards. So stay alive for 200 time steps. So here's another attempt where we just go left for one step and right for one step back and forth till the end of the episode. And since the pull starts a little bit off center to begin with, it'll eventually fall over. So now we're gonna try to use the actual information from the environment. So we'll start with just trying to use the pull angle. So if the pull's leaning to the left, we'll go left. And if it's leaning to the right, we'll go right. So it starts off doing okay, but it kind of overcorrects each time it goes left and right, and eventually it wobbles beyond the angle that is allowed. So let's try instead to use the pull velocity at the tip. So if it has a velocity of it moving to the right, we'll move right, and if it has a velocity of it moving to the left, we'll move left. Doing pretty well, and then it goes off the screen. Let's try that one more time. It's doing pretty well. Bouncing, starts to lean, starts to lean. Actually, that time it did succeed. It made it 200 steps and got total reward of 200. So this method does pretty well. It kind of starts to lean to one side and keep going that way and sometimes go off the screen and end the episode, but sometimes it'll make it the full 200 time steps. So let's try to combine those two solutions. The first one kind of overcorrecting, and this one seems to undercorrect. So we'll see if we add the velocity of the tip of the pole to the angle of the pole. And if that is greater than zero, we'll go one way. And if it's less than zero, we'll go the other way. So here we can see this one is pretty stable. It seems to stay in the center of the screen and it's a good balance between overcorrecting and undercorrecting. And we get a consistent 200 score. So to formalize the problem, we have our environment variables, cart position, the cart velocity, the angle of the pole, and the velocity of the tip of the pole. And we're gonna search for linear solutions to this problem, which means we're gonna try to find these W parameters. So we're gonna take the environment variables, multiply them by these parameters, get an output value, and if that value is greater than zero, our action will be move to the right, and if it's less than zero, or equal to zero, we'll move to the left. First, we're gonna explore just using the pull angle and pull velocity. So that will just be W3 and W4, and we'll keep W1 and W2 set to zero. So we're gonna choose W3 and W4 from a standard normal distribution. So here are the results if we run 1,000 episodes. The size of the circle is how much reward we got. If it's a red circle, we got 200 reward, and if it's a blue circle, it was less than 200. So for the values that are above zero, that means we go in the same direction as that metric. So here we get a lot of red values when we go in the same direction as the pole angle. So if it's leaning to the right, we go to the right. And if it's leaning to the left, we go to the left. If we do the opposite of what our pole angle is, then we're gonna get less reward. And this is similar with our pole velocity. So we can clean up this data by realizing that if we scale the W3 and W4 values by the same amount, it actually won't change the outcome of which actions we choose. So to explain this, if we look at the math, if we scale all our W values by a constant, in this case, for example, five, then it turns out that the output Y value would just equally be scaled by five. So if Y was greater than zero, then five times Y will also be greater than zero. And if Y was less than or equal to zero, then five times Y will also be less than or equal to zero. So we can scale all the points on our plot so that the distance they are from the center is one, and it'll make everything look a bit better. So here are all the values scaled so they're the same distance from the center and we can see a nice consistent curve where the rewards get better and better as we go along the curve and then steeply fall off once we start acting in the opposite direction of the pole velocity. Which makes sense since if the pole is leaning one way and we're moving the opposite way it's going to fall down pretty quickly. So now let's add one more dimension. 
So now we're going to also guess a random value for W2, which will factor in the cart's velocity. And here we are, this is the 3D plot. And now if we look on the inside of the sphere, we kind of see this interesting pattern. And it looks like in this top right area, we're getting all 200 rewards and it's very stable. So if we want to try to find the best parameters, we could say which one of these is the farthest away from a failed episode. So if we look at this one now, you can see there's now a green dot that is the farthest away from any failed episodes. And we can use that as our best guess for W2, W3, and W4. And if we run an episode using those parameters, we can see it's very stable and very unlikely to fall over or move off the screen. So if we use that same method to find good values for all four parameters, W1 through W4, we'll see that the value it chooses for W1 is consistently very small, which means it barely takes into account the cart's position. So if we run it again, we'll see it's similarly a very small value, this time a positive instead of a negative, but mostly it's taking into account the velocity of the cart, the angle of the pole, and the velocity of the pole at the tip. So in harder machine learning problems, we're not going to be able to directly guess the answer. So we're going to want to find a way to explore the parameter space. And if we look at the reward values that these parameters achieve, we can see there's a gradient, kind of like a hill. And we're going to want to explore methods which can estimate this gradient and move in that direction where we'll get more and more rewards. So we'll explore methods that do just that in future videos. So if you want to see them, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. I once tried to code up a solution to the cart pull problem while I was in a tunnel, but I had to stop because I started getting cart pull tunnel syndrome. <laughs>